What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now it is time for some Marvel Comics and we are going to be jumping into the brand new Extreme Carnage Alpha issue number one. Coming out of the events from King and Black, we've learned a lot more about symbiotes that we didn't know before. And in the King and Black event, we saw Agent Anti-Venom come back from the dead. Now, if you didn't get the opportunity to check out the King and Black, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. I covered every single issue to include all of the tie-ins when it comes to the King and Black event. Now, this is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, and the art is by Manuel Garcia. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we dive into this issue, we're picking up with Senator Peter Crane. Now, this senator, he, he's staking his entire platform on an anti-alien agenda. And what we're hearing is a speech from him. This speech saying that these monsters don't belong here, and that the longer they allow aliens to stay on Earth, the bigger threat is going to continue to happen. Now, he really does have a, a strong platform to play on here, because just in recent events, they've had the Empire event, and more recently, they had the King in Black, where everybody was attacked by symbionts. And this most recent one, it plays so well for him, simply for the fact that it was an unbiased attack. The symbiotes attacked everyone, man, woman, child, didn't matter their race or where they were living, it took over the entire world. It wasn't targeting just the Avengers or X-Men or anything specific of that manner. And so it goes without saying that right now people are absolutely terrified. People are scared of the next alien attack, especially if you live in New York City. Now, whilst he's giving this speech, we see a, a symbiote carnage making its way through the ocean waters, making its way up the food chain, taking over one fish, working its way up to taking over a shark. And after taking over a shark, it makes its way to land, makes its way to Somalia, and ends up taking over a young gentleman who is sitting on the shoreline. And what we're seeing is, is Carnage simply making his way through the food chain, making his way up to controls of power, not knowing entirely what he has in store right now, what his plan, what his overall goal is going to be. But being Carnage, knowing everything we know about Carnage, we can only assume that is going to be something very sinister, and it's going to be something that Flash Thompson and no one else sees coming. But the senator, he continues his speech, and he starts to bring it to an end, talking about an organization that he's brought together called Friends of Humanity, and that there's going to be protests at Washington, D.C., all in an effort to pass anti-alien legislation. And as the senator finishes up this speech, he has everybody up in a frenzy, everybody cheering. There's a lot of people that are supporting this. And as he makes his way back into to his little staging area with all of his, his children as well as his staff, they're telling him right now that the projections are really good. People are tuning in, people are agreeing with it. But his son brings up the question, do we really want to isolate individuals like Thor and Hyperion? Do we really want to try to deport these individuals? And more or less, his father tells him that he needs to shut his mouth, to never bring up that kind of language again. Because the platform that they are driving on is exactly that. It's about deporting individuals like Thor. But the senator knows that the only thing right now separating him from the presidency from passing these anti-alien legislation laws is one more alien, one more alien killing spree. But this is when we're taken to a back alley. And we have Flash Thompson, newly reborn, helping out one of his buddies, Hank. And Hank, you know, he, he's done a couple tours of duty. He served in the military, and now being back home, you know, he's helping at this shelter, it, it definitely going to helping veterans. His wife is happy that he's back home, but right now, this is really difficult for him. The transition is really hard for a lot of guys, and this is something that I, I understand on a very personal level, having served myself, being an infantryman myself. It's really hard living that kind of lifestyle, going to war, living that experience, and then coming home and trying to have a normal life, trying to be like everybody else. You know, and Hank goes on, he lets us know that the army, it wasn't really for him, it wasn't really his thing, but it was the intensity, the adrenaline, 
after doing everything that they've done, it's really hard to find real meaning in life after that. And I really enjoy that it's tackling things like this, because it's really hitting some deep issues that are within the veteran community. You know, I personally myself, I've served four years, I wasn't a huge fan of being in the army, but there is that camaraderie that you miss. That sense of purpose that you're given. The almost godlike complex you feel when you feel like the baddest mother effer on the battlefield. And so Hank's really feeling, while this, this work is fulfilling, it's not really craving that niche he needs. And he's thinking about doing some kind of private security work, which is a, a route many veterans do take. Private security is a huge open door for these guys. But in the midst of this conversation, this is when Flash experiences something. He doesn't really understand what happens, but he feels a type of pull on him. And when he opens his eyes, he is sitting in a car. It is nighttime and there is blood strewed everywhere. And looking over, he sees Carnage. And at first flash, he doesn't realize this. But Carnage lets him know that they're family. That they are cousins. And of course, many of us are questioning, like, how is this even possible? How is Carnage around if Cletus is dead? But we can only assume that it's in the same manner that Flash Thompson is also alive. Because if we want to get technical, there are two dead men sitting in that car right now. And this is where we see full Carnage come out. And anti-Venom as well. And it looks like these two are about to duel, but really Carnage, he's brought him here to taunt him. To tell him to follow that pool that he is feeling. To find the rest of his family. Because Carnage, he has plans to change the entire world. And as Flash goes to lay the smack down on Carnage, we hear Hank screaming, calling out Flash's name. Flash coming to realizing that he's in full anti-Venom suit and he's about to beat the crap out of Hank. And he freaks, he panics, you know, this is obviously something he didn't mean to do. Somehow this telepathic connection that he has with Carnage because of the relationship of being quote unquote family. And he didn't realize what he was actually doing. And so apologizing to Hank, he runs off down the alleyway. And as he's making his way down this alley, this is where he gets intercepted by the one and only Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. Now obviously Flash and Iron Man, they've never had the best relationship. But Iron Man has been trying to track down Flash because Iron Man believes they can help one another. Because as it stands, they both have a very serious issue headed in their direction. And that's when we get a glimpse of what Carnage is kind of doing in the background. And it looks like he's making his way up the, the political totem pole. Currently in the body of a doctor, he is trying to get a meeting with Peter Crane, our senator with the anti-alien agenda. But Peter Crane ends up sending his little lackeys instead. And, and because of this, they all just get murdered. Carnage destroys every single one of them in the most brutal ways possible. And so we're starting to see a little bit of, of Carnage's plan start to come to fruition. What better way to take down the government, to take down the world, than by starting one, one of the world's superpowers? By taking over an individual who's already got a platform of getting rid of people like Thor. That would be in Carnage's best interest at the end of the day. But then we pick up with a lab. A lab of Tony Stark's. And while Tony, you know, he, he's super intelligent, this lab itself it kind of recreates itself for whatever crisis they're having to face that day. But right now, he's dealing with something that's that's kind of out of his realm of expertise. And that has to do with symbiotes. Because in the King of Black event, we saw him kind of bond with a symbiote, creating an Iron Man symbiote armor. And so after the events, he bonded the symbiote with Extremis. And he calls this little experiment Extrembiot. Pretty much a symbiote fused with the technology, something that Tony Stark can control. And right off the bat, Flash tries to tell him, like, this is not something you can control. You may have temporarily control over this thing, but in the long run, you're going to end up losing control of this. Now, Tony, he's not 100% sure of that, because people like F Flash, people like Eddie, they're all able to control their symbiotes. And of course, it's not as simple as that. There's, there's that bond there. There's a connection that is fused. It's something that has to be worked together with. 
but that's really not the reason he brought him here. While he would love some help on, on this specific project, Iron Man has been tracking something else. He's been tracking the moves of Carnage. Though up to this point, he doesn't know that it is Carnage. He is following a, a symbiote who's been laying waste all up and down the world. Because after the events of the King in Black, he decided to track down every symbiote that he could find. Because not all of them are connected to the Hive that Eddie Brock is in control of. Not all the symbiotes are out there doing good things now. Because that's what we've seen. With Eddie Brock taking over as the King in Black, we've seen the symbiotes become more or less a Green Lantern Corps. Individuals out there in, in, among the stars on infinite number of planets helping as many people as possible. And as Flash is looking over everything that Iron Man has uncovered, he immediately knows that this is Carnage. Now everybody thinks, you know, Cletus is dead. How can this be Carnage if Cletus has died? And Flash lets him know that it's not as simple as that. It doesn't work if you're dead or not. His consciousness is still alive. Still alive with inside the hive. And when a host and symbiote have such a strong bond, there can be an imprint left behind. And there's never, ever been a stronger bond than Carnage and Cletus. And the other reason that he is confident it is Carnage is because of his little vision he had. Whatever that pool was that brought him to wherever Carnage was, this all just reaffirms that that wasn't just a vision, that it was something more. And Iron Man, he kind of has an idea of what Carnage might be planning. Because as it stands, after the Null invasion, everything has changed. Usually when the Avengers and everybody go against some world-ending event, it's something that's not really seen. It's not really affecting everybody. But the Null invasion was much different because it attacked everything and everybody. From dogs to cats to children to babies, there was no mercy. There was not a single soul that was spared. And as it stands, the world is scared to death. And something that they cannot deal with right now is another alien attack, especially an alien symbiote attack. And nobody is banging that drum harder than Peter Crane the Senator. And so they believe that, that Carnage is going to be going after this Senator. And so what Iron Man is asking is Flash Thompson kind of go undercover, go to this event, and try to make sure that nothing happens to the Senator. Make sure that Carnage can't get to him. And with his connection to Carnage being able to feel that pull, it should lead him to the right direction. Because if something were to happen to Peter Crane, he would be a martyr to the cause and there would be no stopping this alien, anti-alien legislation. And the friends of humanity, they would be the new normal around here. And that's where we pick up with a press conference. And we have the senator up at his podium giving his speech. And as he's doing his typical propaganda speech, we see Flash out in the crowd. Now right now he's looking around for anybody that might be controlled or under the influence of the symbiote. And as he continues to look around, this is when he hears the voice of Carnage. Because Carnage, he knew that Flash would show up. They have been waiting for Flash to show up. And he lets Flash Thompson know that Carnage has brought everybody together. All of their brothers and sisters, pretty much every symbiote Venom has ever spawned is all around him right now because Carnage has created a hive of his own and we see Anti-Venom bust out and he is trying to make his escape. He is completely outnumbered, he has been ambushed, there is no way that he is going to be able to make it out of this and even if he were to fight this, it's going to look bad in the public eye. And as we see Anti-Venom form around him, there is an immediate panic because it's a symbiote. Everybody right now is scared of symbiotes regardless of what they look like. And he tries to tell Tony Stark that I'm making my way out of here. But Tony is worried that Carnage might go after the Senator. Little do they know, an Agent Venom now assuming that the Senator has been taken over by Carnage. Carnage is the Senator, and this is exactly what he wanted. Wanted to lure Flash Thompson here, so he would bring out Anti-Venom and cause a huge commotion. Only furthering the policies, but also flexing that they now have a hive of their own. Something that stands outside of Eddie Brock's control. And then we're taken to later that evening, and we have a meetup with Hank 
and Flash. Now, Hank is his army buddy that was looking for some kind of security work, some kind of security detail work. And right now, Flash Thompson, he needs a man on the inside. And as it stands, the senator's security detail, they are hiring right now. And so he offers Hank a job, apologizing for everything that happened, but saying that there's some serious stuff going down and he needs somebody, somebody to have his back, somebody that he can trust. And Hank, without question, tells him that he's in. 100% he's in, whatever he's got to do, he's got his back. And that will be where this issue ends. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think personally, this is a great start to this line. You know, we're going to see a lot of the, the brother and sister symbiotes coming out and, and popping up. We're going to find out how many symbiotes are actually detached from Eddie Brock's hive. But I know I'm always excited to see some freaking Carnage, and the fact that Carnage is, is using the Senator more or less as protection, because you can't outright attack this individual. He's a freaking state Senator. Not only that, but he is leading an anti-alien agenda. So right now, all cameras are on him. So they have to try to do their best to expose Carnage without getting caught up for some kind of treason in the process. I was a little disappointed to, to not see some more of Scream in this, considering it's on the cover, but I take that as a sign of what is going to be, what's going to be in the near future. This is going to be an eight issue run, so there's plenty of time for them to drop in some Scream in here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.